The silence that followed the crash was deafening. Marisol's ears rang as she regained consciousness, the cockpit around her a blur of smoke and broken displays. Her breath came in short gasps, fogging up the cracked glass of her helmet. With a shaking hand, she released the harness that pinned her to her seat, the metallic clinks echoing in the small space as she pushed herself free. Outside, the world was unlike any she had seen. Alien trees with luminescent leaves towered into the sky, casting eerie shadows on the ground. The air was thick with the scent of something sweet and unknown, filling Marisol's lungs with each breath. She retrieved her emergency pack from beneath her seat, checking for the essentials. A water purifier, a compact medical kit, and her universal translator. With some effort, Marisol pried open the jammed cockpit door, stepping out into the alien environment. Her ship, the Nomad, lay in ruins behind her, its once sleek form twisted and charred, parts of it still smoldering. She surveyed the wreckage, her heart sinking. It was clear there would be no quick repairs, no easy escape from this place. As the reality of her situation settled in, panic rose in her throat. She was alone, possibly the sole survivor of a catastrophic failure during hyperdrive. Her thoughts raced with the emergency protocols and survival training she had undergone, but nothing had prepared her for the desolation of being the only human in an uncharted world. Her comm device, still partially functional, picked up only static. With a deep breath, Marisol decided to explore the immediate area. Survival first, rescue would have to come later. She secured her pack and made her way towards a nearby clearing, each step away from the wreckage a step into the unknown. As night began to fall, the forest came alive with the sounds of alien creatures. Marisol set up a makeshift camp, using a heat blanket from her pack. The trees provided some shelter, but the unfamiliar noises in the darkness kept her awake, alert and tense. Suddenly, rustling from the underbrush caught her attention. Marisol grabbed a light stick, snapping it to life. Its glow pierced the darkness, revealing the eyes of the forest's inhabitants. Just as fear gripped her, a voice called out, not from the creatures, but from her translator. Do not be afraid, it said, the voice unmistakably alien, yet filled with a strange warmth. Marisol stepped back, her heart pounding, as several figures emerged from the shadows, their appearances as diverse as the galaxy itself. Thus began Marisol's first encounter with the inhabitants of this mysterious planet, marking the end of her isolation but the beginning of a far greater saga on this lush alien world. Marisol held her breath as the figures approached, their forms varying wildly. Some were tall and slender with iridescent skin that shimmered under the light of her glow stick, while others were shorter, their bodies covered in what looked like soft, moss-like fur. Despite their differences, they moved with a cautious grace, keeping a respectful distance. The leader of the group, who later introduced himself as Theron, stepped forward. His stature was commanding, with features that seemed both ancient and regal. His eyes glinted with intelligence as he studied Marisol, who stood frozen in place. We mean you no harm, Theron spoke, his voice resonating through the translator. Marisol noticed a device similar to hers clipped to his ear. We too are strangers here. Marisol lowered her glow stick slightly, trying to appear less defensive. I'm Marisol, pilot of the Nomad, I... Her voice faltered, the gravity of her situation sinking in again. I crashed. My ship is destroyed. Theron nodded solemnly. We witnessed your arrival. It was... violent. You are fortunate to be alive. Behind Theron, the other members of the group murmured among themselves, their eyes filled with a mix of curiosity and sympathy. Marisol noticed that they carried no visible weapons, and their body language was open, an encouraging sign. What about you? Marisol asked, her curiosity overcoming her initial fear. Who are you? We are the Vilnari, Theron explained. Survivors like you from different worlds. Our ship was caught in a gravitational anomaly and brought us here many cycles ago. Marisol's heart ached in empathy. She wasn't alone in her plight. How many of you are there? She inquired, her gaze sweeping over the group. Twenty-three now, Theron replied. We lost many to the planet's challenges. It is not an easy place to survive, but we have learned much. We can share this knowledge with you. The offer of alliance was unexpected, but welcome. Survival had been the first thing on Marisol's mind since the crash, and the prospect of navigating this alien environment with others who had already adapted was relieving. Thank you, I, I would appreciate that, 
Marisol said, her relief evident. I don't know how I can repay your kindness. Theron smiled, a gesture that seemed to cross cultural boundaries. In time, you will find your way to contribute, he assured her. Tomorrow, we will show you our settlement. You must rest now. The nights here can be challenging. Marisol nodded, her exhaustion creeping up on her now that the adrenaline was fading. She followed Theron's gesture to a spot near where they stood, an area cleared and evidently used for camping. As she set up her heat blanket again, the Vilnari retreated to the shadows, giving her space yet staying within reach. Lying under the alien stars, Marisol felt a stirring of hope. The night was filled with the sounds of a world teeming with life, and for the first time since her crash, she wasn't afraid of the dark. She was no longer alone, and in this vast unknown universe, that meant everything. The following morning, Marisol awoke to a sky painted in strokes of orange and purple, the dawn light filtering through the giant leaves overhead. Theron was already up, along with several others from the group, preparing what appeared to be a morning meal. Good morning, Marisol, Theron greeted her, offering a bowl filled with a variety of alien fruits and some sort of grain. Please join us. Food helps begin the day with strength. Marisol accepted the bowl, grateful for the hospitality. The food was unfamiliar but pleasantly flavorful. As she ate, she observed the Vilnari going about their morning routines with an efficiency that spoke of long adaptation to their environment. After breakfast, Tharan led Marisol through the dense forest to their settlement. As they walked, he explained more about the planet. This world is alive more than you might expect. The forests sense and react, the storms come swiftly, and the creatures are cunning. But it is home now. Marisol listened intently, taking note of the paths they walked and the markings Theron pointed out as navigation aids. Eventually, they reached the settlement, a collection of structures built from the materials the forest provided. Everything was constructed to blend into the environment, with living vines forming walls and tree limbs creating frameworks. This is impressive, Marisol remarked, genuinely awed by their ingenuity. We've learned to work with the planet, not against it, Theron said, but there are challenges. Come, I must show you something. They walked to the edge of the settlement, where Marisol saw a device, cobbled together from various technologies, monitoring the atmosphere. Our biggest threat is not from the ground, but from above. The storms here can form in minutes, devastating anything in their path. As if on cue, dark clouds began to gather on the horizon, swirling ominously. Theron pointed to the sky. A storm is coming. It will be here soon. We must prepare. Marisol followed him back to the settlement, where everyone sprang into action. Theron assigned her to help fortify the structures using knowledge she had from her ship about reinforcing materials against pressure and wind. The storm hit with ferocious power, winds howling like tortured spirits. Marisol worked alongside a Vilnari named Yale, who showed her how to apply a sticky, sap-like substance that helped hold the building materials together. You learn fast, Jail commented as they secured a last piece just as the rain began to lash down. I had good teachers, Marisol responded, smiling through the rain. For hours, the storm raged, testing the strength of their preparations. When it finally abated, the settlement stood firm, though the forest around them bore the scars of the tempest. Tharan approached Marisol, his expression a mix of relief and admiration. You have done well today, he said. You are truly one of us now. Marisol felt a surge of pride and belonging. She had not only survived, but contributed to the survival of others. As they surveyed the damage and began repairs, Marisol realized that this planet, with all its dangers and beauty, was becoming her new home. And with the Vilnari, she had found a new family. Days turned into weeks and Marisol adapted to life among the Vilnari. She learned their ways, contributed to the community, and even began to feel a sense of belonging. However, the peace was shattered one morning when an urgent commotion near the outskirts of the settlement woke everyone. Something's crashed beyond the northern ridge. One of the scouts reported breathlessly to Theron and Marisol, who had joined the morning assembly. It's different this time, not like the usual debris from the storms. Curiosity and concern sparked among the group. Theron turned to Marisol. Would you join me to investigate? Your experience with spacecraft could be invaluable. Marisol nodded, her pulse quickening with the prospect of something from beyond their world. She grabbed her gear, and along with Theron and a small team, set out towards the northern ridge. 
The trek was tough, the forest dense and the terrain uneven. As they approached the site, the smell of scorched metal filled the air, a stark reminder of her own crash landing. They emerged into a clearing and saw it, an escape pod, much smaller than Marisol's ship, but clearly designed for space travel. It's human-made, Marisol said instantly, recognizing the model and make. This is from an Earth ship. The group spread out, securing the area and checking for threats. Marisol approached the pod, her heart in her throat. The hatch was partially open, and inside she saw him, a man, unconscious but alive. We need to get him out, she instructed, motioning to the others to help. They carefully extracted the man from the pod and laid him on the ground. Marisol checked his vitals and administered first aid from her medical kit. As the man regained consciousness, his eyes flickered open, confusion evident. Where am I? He rasped. You're safe, Marisol reassured him, offering him water. I'm Marisol and you're on an uncharted planet. Can you tell me your name? Connor, he managed to say. I was escaping a pirate raid. They hit my ship. I had to eject. Marisol exchanged a glance with Theron, who nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. We'll discuss everything once we get back to the settlement. For now, rest. We have a journey ahead of us. As they journeyed back, Connor leaned on Marisol, his strength failing him. Marisol felt an unexpected connection to him, a fellow human so far from their shared home planet. It was both comforting and deeply saddening, knowing the odds they both faced being stranded here. Back at the settlement, the Vilnari welcomed Connor with cautious hospitality. Marisol explained to him about their situation and about the Vilnari. Connor listened intently, his eyes occasionally meeting hers, a silent thank you in his gaze. As days turned into weeks, Connor slowly integrated into the daily life of the settlement. His presence, however, wasn't without complications. The Vilnari, while generally welcoming, harbored a cautious distrust of the newly arrived human, whose arrival coincided with a series of unexpected and troubling events around the settlement. Marisol noticed small groups whispering among themselves, their glances often darting towards Connor. Tharan approached her one morning with a concerned look in his eyes. Marisol, there are voices of concern among us. Some believe that the arrival of another human is an ill omen, he explained. I understand their fear, Marisol replied, feeling a knot of worry form in her stomach. But Connor is not responsible for the troubles we're facing. Theron nodded thoughtfully. I believe you, but fear often clouds judgment. We must find a way to ease these tensions before they escalate. Determined to demonstrate Connor's value to the community, Marisol worked closely with him on various projects, leveraging his engineering skills to improve the settlement's infrastructure. Connor proposed a new irrigation system, drawing from his experience on Earth, which could greatly enhance their crop yields. Their project was initially met with skepticism, but as the system began to show promise, some of the Vilnari started to warm up to him. However, not everyone was convinced. Jail, one of the community's respected elders, remained suspicious, his eyes often narrowing whenever he saw Connor interacting with other Vilnari. One evening, as Marisol and Connor tested the new irrigation system, a sudden alarm echoed through the settlement. A fire had broken out near the storage area, threatening their food supplies. Without hesitation, the entire community mobilized to combat the flames. After a frantic hour, the fire was extinguished, but much of their food reserve was destroyed. The mood in the camp was grim. Whispers circulated that the fire was no accident and some suspicious eyes turned towards Connor. Marisol stood beside Connor, who looked bewildered and hurt by the accusations murmured among the crowd. She spoke out. This was an accident, one that could have happened to any of us. We need to focus on what we can salvage and rebuild, not cast blame without proof. Tharan stepped forward, supporting Marisol's plea. We must stand together, not apart in times of crisis. Let us investigate properly and repair the damage as a community. The tension simmered down, but the incident had sown seeds of doubt and fear that wouldn't easily be uprooted. Later that night, Tharan confided in Marisol. We need to be vigilant, both for threats from within and from outside. Your friend needs to be careful, his actions will be closely watched. Marisol nodded, understanding the delicate balance she needed to maintain. As she walked back to her shelter, she felt Connor's eyes on her, filled with a mix of gratitude and concern. Thank you for standing up for me, 
he said quietly as they reached her door. I know you're not to blame, she replied. We'll get through this together. In the days following the fire, the atmosphere within the settlement grew increasingly strained. Accusations continued to whisper through the undergrowth like a persistent wind, and Marisol found herself more often playing the role of mediator than that of a survivor. Connor's movements were now closely watched by a few wary Vilnari, adding pressure to the already tense situation. One morning, the tension boiled over. Marisol was awakened by a commotion outside her shelter. Stepping out, she saw a group of Vilnari surrounding Connor, who stood with his back against a tree, his face a mask of confusion and anger. He's been tampering with the water supplies, accused a Vilnari named Kevra, pointing an accusing finger at Connor. That's not true, Connor protested, his voice rising in frustration. I was checking the systems for leaks, making sure another accident like the fire doesn't happen. Marisol stepped forward, placing herself between Connor and the angry group. Everyone, please, let's discuss this calmly. Accusations without evidence will only harm us all. Her intervention bought them a moment of hesitation, but the suspicion remained palpable. Tharan arrived, his expression grave. This can't go on, he said quietly to Marisol. We need a solution, or this will tear us apart. Later that day, Marisol and Connor were summoned to a meeting with Tharan and the elders. It was decided that for the good of the community, Connor would be relocated to a smaller camp nearby, under the watch of two Vilnari guards. It was a compromise to keep the peace, and Connor reluctantly agreed, understanding the precariousness of his position. The relocation was supposed to be a precaution, but it escalated the situation into outright hostility. Two days later, a scouting party returned with news of an approaching predator pack, a rare and deadly threat. The settlement was in the path of their migration, a fact that had everyone on edge. We need every hand to prepare defenses, Theron announced to the assembly, including Connors. The group reluctantly agreed, and Connor was brought back under guard. Marisol worked alongside him, trying to keep the mood focused and cooperative. They fortified the perimeter, setting up traps and warning systems. In the midst of their preparations, disaster struck. The predator pack attacked earlier than anticipated, their approach masked by the dense foliage. The settlement was thrown into chaos, the air filled with roars and screams. Amid the confusion, Connor was blamed for inadvertently tripping an alarm prematurely, causing panic. In the chaos, the guards lost track of him, and he fled into the forest, chased by both predators and a few furious Vilnari. Connor, Marisol called out, fear gripping her as she realized he was running deeper into danger. She grabbed a weapon and followed, her decision instantaneous but fraught with peril. The forest was a blur as she ran, dodging branches and leaping over roots. She heard shouts behind her, the voices of the Vilnari who thought Connor was leading the predators to them, a misunderstood scapegoat in a deadly chase. Marisol finally caught sight of Connor, cornered by one of the predators, a massive creature with razor-sharp claws. Without hesitating, she charged, firing her weapon. The predator reeled back, wounded and roaring. Marisol, Connor shouted, relieved yet terrified as she reached his side. Together they fought back, driving the creature away with a flurry of desperate shots. Breathing heavily, they looked at each other, realizing the gravity of what had just occurred. They were alone now, separated from the settlement by wild terrain and wilder accusations. We can't go back, Connor said, his voice tense. Marisol nodded, her mind racing. We'll find another way, together. With the predators still close and their former allies now potential foes, Marisol and Connor faced the wilderness, uncertain of their future but united in their determination to survive. Marisol and Connor moved deeper into the alien forest, keeping a careful watch for both predators and any Vilnari pursuing them. The terrain became increasingly rugged, Pushing their physical limits as they navigated steep ravines and dense undergrowth, they found a small cave near a waterfall where they decided to set up a temporary camp, hidden from immediate sight. As they sat by a small fire, Connor's expression grew serious. Marisol, there's something I need to tell you, he began, his voice low. Back on Earth, I was part of a team that dealt with forbidden technologies. What I was running from before I crashed, it wasn't just pirates. It was my own government. Marisol listened intently, the flickering fire casting shadows on their faces. 
What kind of technologies? She asked, a knot of worry forming in her stomach. Experimental stuff, Connor explained, including a device capable of creating powerful energy pulses, energy strong enough to signal a ship in hyperspace. Marisol's eyes widened. You have it, here? Connor nodded, reaching into his bag and pulling out a small, intricately designed box. I managed to save it from the wreckage. It's illegal because it can also disrupt electronic systems if misused. That's why the government wanted it back so badly. Marisol understood the gravity of the situation. We could use it to signal for help, she said slowly, weighing the risks. But if it's discovered with us, we'd be arrested or worse, Connor finished for her. But it might be our only chance to get off this planet and find somewhere safe. They decided to wait, using the time to gather food and strengthen their defenses. Days passed as they prepared, always wary of any signs of the Predator Pack or the Vilnari. One night, as they discussed their options, Marisol sighed. We're living on borrowed time here. Each day is another risk of being found or attacked. Connor looked at her, determination set in his features. Let's do it. Let's use the device. It's better to take the chance than to wait here until something worse happens. They planned meticulously choosing a remote clearing that would minimize the chance of the pulse affecting their Vilnari friends. As they set up the device, Marisol felt a surge of hope mixed with fear. Connor activated the device and a brilliant pulse of light shot up into the sky, piercing the atmosphere. The energy ripple was momentary but intense. Now all they could do was wait. Days passed with no sign of a ship. Doubt crept into their minds as they maintained their vigil. But then, late one afternoon, a distant hum filled the air, a sound both had dreamed of, but feared they would never hear again. A ship was descending towards the planet. Marisol and Connor watched, holding their breaths, as the ship broke through the clouds. It was a medium-sized vessel, not of Earth design, but clearly capable of interstellar travel. As the ship landed, they approached cautiously. The hatch opened, revealing not a government force, but a crew of various alien races, each member looking just as surprised to see humans as Marisol and Connor were to see them. We received your distress signal, the captain, a tall, blue-skinned alien, explained. We're traders and explorers. We can take you with us, but you must agree to work for your passage. Relief washed over Marisol and Connor as they agreed without hesitation. As the ship took off, leaving the planet and its challenges behind, they looked at each other with newfound hope. Together, they had faced unimaginable odds, and now, aboard this new vessel, they were no longer fugitives but crewmates headed towards an uncertain yet promising future. The journey aboard the trader ship was an uneasy alliance. Marisol and Connor had to prove their worth daily. As they adapted to life among an eclectic crew, the ship received a distress call from the same uncharted planet they had just left. The message was garbled, but one thing was clear. It was Theron's voice pleading for help. Marisol felt a pang of guilt and responsibility. She approached the captain, a gruff but fair-minded Taylorian named Captain Zorak. Captain, that's the planet we were stranded on. Those people helped me survive when I first crashed. We can't just leave them. Captain Zorak was initially reluctant. Our mission is trade, not rescue operations, he grumbled. However, after some persuasion and an agreement that Marisol and Connor would assume all risks, he consented to return to the planet. As the ship descended, Marisol prepared for a ground mission, her heart heavy with the fear of what they might find. Connor joined her, armed and ready. We're in this together, he assured her, squeezing her hand. They landed near the settlement to find it besieged by another predator pack, larger and more aggressive than before. The Vilnari were desperately defending their homes, but they were clearly outnumbered and on the verge of defeat. Without hesitating, Marisol and Connor leaped into action. Using the weapons and tactics they had acquired during their time away, they helped turn the tide. They fought fiercely, driving the predators back with every shot and strike. During the battle, Marisol spotted Theron, injured but still fighting valiantly. She fought her way to his side, providing the cover he needed to regain his footing. Marisol, you came back for us, Theron exclaimed, relief and disbelief in his voice. We couldn't just leave you, Marisol shouted back over the roar of the combat. With the help of the ship's crew, who had joined the fight after seeing the plight of the Vilnari, the predators were finally driven away. The settlement was battered and bruised, but still standing much like its inhabitants. After the battle, as they tended to the wounded, 
Theron approached Marisol and Connor. His eyes were filled with gratitude. I was wrong to doubt your friend, he admitted, gesturing to Connor. You both saved us. Connor nodded, accepting the acknowledgement with a humble smile. We're just glad we could help. Captain Zorak, having witnessed the bravery and resilience of the Vilnari, offered Theron and his people a deal. We can't leave you here with those beasts coming back. You can travel with us, find a new home, or we can come back with reinforcements to help you defend this place. Tharin considered the offer deeply. After a long discussion with his community, he decided it was time for the Vilnari to see more of the galaxy. We will go with you, he declared. It is time for new beginnings. As the trader ship ascended with the Vilnari aboard, Marisol looked out at the planet shrinking below them. She felt a mix of sorrow and relief. Sorrow for the hardships endured, and relief that a new chapter was beginning for everyone. On the deck of the ship, Connor took her hand, and together they watched the stars. No matter where we go, he said, as long as we're together, I think we can handle just about anything. Marisol squeezed his hand, her heart full. They had escaped, saved a community, and found a new path forward. The galaxy was vast, filled with unknowns, but for Marisol and Connor it was now an open road waiting to be traveled together. As the trader ship hurtled through space, Marisol and Connor, along with the newly rescued Vilnari, settled into their new roles aboard Captain Zorak's vessel. Life on the ship was a constant learning curve, with each day bringing new challenges and opportunities to integrate more deeply with their interstellar companions. Marisol took it upon herself to coordinate the Vilnari's transition, ensuring they adapted well to the technologies and customs aboard the ship. Her efforts did not go unnoticed. Her natural leadership helped ease the cultural shock for the Vilnari. Connor, meanwhile, was busy in the engineering bay, applying his skills to enhance the ship's systems. His innovations not only boosted the ship's efficiency, but also earned him a respected place among the crew. The suspicions that once shadowed his every step seemed a distant memory, as he worked alongside aliens from various sectors of the galaxy. However, the peace was short-lived. The beacon that Connor had activated to signal the trader ship had also caught the attention of a less friendly visitor. A bounty hunter ship, employed by those who sought the return of the forbidden technology Connor had used, was now in hot pursuit. Captain Zorak called a meeting, laying out the stark situation. We've got a hunter on our tail. They're not just after the ship. They want the tech and the human who stole it, he explained, glancing at Connor. Connor stepped forward, his resolve clear. Let me deal with this. It's my problem. We can lure them away and I'll surrender the device. They don't have to involve the ship or anyone else. Marisol was quick to object. No, we can handle this together. There's got to be another way. After intense discussion, they devised a daring plan. They would feign surrendering Connor and the device, but during the exchange, they would disable the bounty hunter's ship and escape using a series of pre-planned maneuvers and a little help from the Vilnari's unique knowledge of spatial anomalies. The bounty hunter's ship, a formidable vessel bristling with weapons, met them at the designated coordinates. The air was tense as Connor, holding a decoy box supposed to contain the device, prepared to board their shuttle. As he stepped into the shuttle, Marisol felt a surge of fear. Despite their plan, the danger was all too real. She watched intently as the shuttle approached the hunter's ship, the rest of the crew ready at their stations. Just as the exchange was about to take place, the Vilnari enacted their part of the plan. Using a natural phenomenon they called the Veil, a barely understood spatial distortion, they created a temporary warp in the space near the hunter's ship. Confusion reigned on the hunter's bridge as their sensors scrambled. Seizing the moment, Connor activated the decoy, an EMP burst engineered by the ship's tech team, which fried the hunter's internal systems. With the hunter temporarily disabled, Captain Zorak executed a series of sharp maneuvers, pulling away at maximum speed. The crew cheered as the distance between them and the hunter widened, their escape route lit by the streaks of stars as they entered hyperspace. Back on the ship, as they left the threat behind, the relief was palpable. Marisol hugged Connor tightly, overwhelmed by their narrow escape. You're stuck with me now? No more solo acts, she teased, half serious. Connor laughed, his eyes reflecting the starlight. Wouldn't have it any other way. Together, they returned to the bridge where the Vilnari and the crew were celebrating. Their unity had been their strength, and now the galaxy seemed a little less daunting.